Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to take a look at critical points and extrema. So let's start by defining a critical point. If some number C is an interior point in the domain of a function F, and either one or the other of the following is true. If F prime of C equals zero, or if F prime of C is undefined, then we call that C a critical point of F. We're going to be interested in finding critical points because they will be locations that could possibly be where we might find a minimum or maximum point. So let's take a look at visually what these critical points would look like. Well, places where f prime of c is equal to zero is any place where we would get a horizontal tangent line because the slope of a tangent line is a derivative and a zero slope gives us a horizontal line. So we have tops of hills or bottoms of valleys. Where f prime of c is undefined, we might have a couple of things happen. We might have a sharp point like here in this absolute value function, or we might have a vertical tangent line, meaning the derivative here is having something over zero. So let's take a look at finding these values. So if we have the function g of x equals 1 3rd x cubed plus 2x squared minus 12x plus 5, the first step in finding our critical points is to find the first derivative. So 3 times 1 3rd is 1x squared plus 2 times 2 is 4x minus 12 plus 0. So here's our derivative, x squared plus 4x minus 12. Now again, we can get critical points one of two ways. We can look for values where our first derivative is zero, or we can find values where our first derivative is undefined. In this case, our first derivative is a polynomial function, which is always defined and continuous for the entire real line, meaning we will not find any values where g prime is undefined. Our only hope for critical points for this one is where g prime is equal to zero. So if we take our function and set it equal to zero, then factoring, that would be x plus six times x minus two equals zero. Setting our factors separately equal to zero, we get x plus six equals zero and x minus two equals zero, which gives us two critical points where x equals negative six and x equals positive two. So the critical points for g of x equals this cubic polynomial are negative six and two. Okay, taking a look at our next example, to find all critical points of the function h of x equals x squared divided by two x minus one, we'll need to start by finding our first derivative. Since we have a quotient here, I'm going to identify the top function as f and the bottom function as g. Then h prime of x, using our quotient rule, will begin f prime times g, or 2x times 2x minus 1, minus f times g prime, or x squared times 2, and that will be all over g squared, or 2x minus 1 squared. Taking a moment to distribute in the numerator so we can simplify a bit, we're going to get 4x squared minus 2x minus 2x squared, still over 2x minus 1 squared. Now combining my like terms in my numerator, I'll have 2x squared minus 2x over 2x minus 1 squared. Now remember, we can get critical points in two ways. We can find places where h prime of c is equal to 0, and we can also find places where h prime of c is undefined. So when working with a rational function, like our first derivative here, we can find locations where h prime is equal to 0 by setting our numerator equal to 0. So 2x squared minus 2x equals 0. Solving this, we'll first go ahead and factor out our common factor of 2x. 
that leaves behind a factor of x minus 1, setting those separately equal to 0, and then solving, I get critical points at x equals 0 and 1. Another possible location for critical points is a place where our first derivative, h prime, is undefined. For a rational function, that would mean where our denominator is equal to 0. So taking 2x minus 1 squared and setting that equal to 0, I can take the square root of both sides. That will give me 2x minus 1 equals 0, then 2x equals 1, then x equals 1 half. Now this would be a critical point except that if we think about our original function, x equals 1 half is not in the domain of the original function because x equals 1 half not only makes the denominator of the first derivative 0, but it also makes the denominator of our original function 0. So for that reason, x equals 1 half is not a critical point. So h of x has two critical points, one at 0 and one at 1. All right, guys, that does it for this video on critical points and extrema. To see more, keep on watching. Until then, we'll catch you in a future video.